So a little bit of background um, about the Mini that we've uh, had issues with. Uh, we purchased the Mini in March 2019. It was a uh, 2018 Mini Cooper Sport 1.5. And um, towards end of September, beginning of October, somewhere around there, uh, the vehicle all of a sudden started to develop this fault where it was self rev all by itself, randomly. No, no warnings, no warning lights, just happened sporadically unexplained times and um, we put it back into the dealership uh, it went back uh, in November 2019 December January February it was due to go in March uh, didn't go in in March because of the uh, the lockdowns of COVID uh, then went back in June uh, I'm not sure if it went in July I'd have to check on that one I think it went twice in uh, August uh, and it's been in the dealership from the 23rd of September up until today's date which I think is off the top of my head, 14th of December so it's been in there um, nearly 12 weeks and uh, we would like to share the experience we've had and uh, I'd like to share a letter that we've sent to the dealership for a response now I don't propose to name anybody personally. I don't think that's ethically or morally correct to shame anybody in public. Uh, I think this is more of a company issue. And uh, so before I do the letter that we've sent or some of the questions we've asked, I just wanna show you the, the fault uh, as how it's been presenting itself. And so you can give you an idea of uh, the issues that we've uh, been experiencing. Sit back and watch this. No. So there you go, you can see the, uh, the issues and our concerns of why we sought a rejection of the vehicle, uh, having it uh, have these problems uh, for such a long time and having been into the dealership for so many issues where they just don't seem to be able to uh, resolve it. Um, we did report the fault to the Vehicle Safety Board who've asked uh, for it to be investigated and uh, we're still waiting that response. We've got some information that we obviously will pass on to them in due course uh, from some evidence that we've uh, been able to establish as well. So the, uh, the, the letter was aimed at one particular individual. She has decided to take over the case. Uh, not sure why, but she has and uh, she's the customer service manager at Cotswold. So this is the letter and these are some of the questions that we have posed to her. Would you agree that you have stated that your dealership has never been able to replicate this fault? See, on the 9th of November 2019, your technician reports the following. Road tested vehicle for engine revving when clutch is pressed, confirmed fault. And then on the 24th of January 2020, another technician reports states this. Carried out road tests to replicate fault, able to replicate at low speeds. So the question to you is, why have you stated that your dealership has never been able to replicate the fault when there is evidence that proves otherwise? We are pleased to see from your email that you value us as a loyal customer who has purchased over 20 minutes since 2007, 13 years. And we've worked out that during that time, we have taught approximately three and a half thousand pupils. How many of those pupils or pupils' parents do you think went on to purchase a Mini, having learned to drive in one? And we would conservatively estimate that to be at least 100 pupils, probably even much more. How many of those pupils, also including ourselves, do you think would have used your dealership for the purchase of those vehicles, servicing parts, warranty work and accident repairs? Adding all that up, how much do you think our business has assisted and contributed to the mini brand in free advertising and revenue over the 13 years as this loyal customer? Do you think one and a half million pounds to be a realistic estimate? Because we do. So yes, we also consider ourselves to be this loyal customer. And after this experience and the manner in which it's been dealt with, do you believe, do you honestly believe us to remain a loyal customer to both the mini brand and your dealership? Do you think that this could have a negative impact on your business? And I draw your attention to 
an email that we sent to your customer service manager on the 25th of September 2020. And in that email, we asked him to pass on a letter to Mini UK. And we explained that we would be happy to talk to Mini, just, just to try and come up with a reasonable solution. And I never had an acknowledgement to that email or any reply or correspondence from either the service manager, you at Cotswold Mini or anybody from Mini UK. And I will include that letter that I sent to your service manager. You've stated in numerous times that you cannot consider the rejection of the Mini until a diagnosis is made. So I've got a question for you. Can you confirm if a diagnosis was made on a Mini that we rejected in 2019? The registration number WO18XFL last year when it had an intermittent chirping noise coming from the gearbox area. Even after you replace numerous parts, including clutch, clutch components, a gearbox, you even dropped the front end of the engine to find out where that noise was coming from, but you couldn't find it where it was coming from or resolve it. And it's my understanding that a diagnosis was never made as to what was causing that chirping noise. But that rejection was accepted without question. And if that is correct, why have you not accepted the fault of this Mini? Is it because, and this is only a suggestion, it's not an accusation, is it because we involved the Vehicle Safety Board that you're now worried that we've highlighted a potential problem? I don't know. Is it possible that you are trying to delay the process, hoping that we will drop the matter, anticipating that we will have no Mini to use for our business, 12 weeks and counting? On the 15th of February 2020, you charged us £150 for an oil change that you felt may be the cause of the over revenue. Why have you not supplied the job card for that date when this vehicle came to you for the over revenue fault? What evidence? Was there to suggest that you felt an oil change could be the cause of this vehicle randomly revving? Were there any fault codes? And why did you not update our vehicle's onboard computer with the service? And you wrote a letter to our solicitor, which was dated the 7th of December 2020. And in that letter, you stated the following. Please note the oil change you are referring to was in fact the first service due on the car. That's not correct was it? Actually the first service was carried out on the 29th of June 2019 at your dealership with a mileage of 12,555. So can I ask a, an important question for you? Why did you tell an untruth? Why did you try and mislead our solicitor? Your service manager has verbally stated that our Mini was the only Mini in the country to have had this fault of over revving. And the question I'd like to ask at this point is, why is that statement made when there is evidence out there that other Mini owners have also experienced this particular fault of the vehicle just randomly, unexplainedly revving all by itself without the foot being on the accelerator? And we have been able to secure good evidence from other Mini owners to that effect. And they have reported to us this random revving fault that they've reported to BMW Mini prior to our Mini developing the fault that you had in November 2019. And the question I have, can you either confirm or even deny that there is a known fault for this particular fault and maybe there is a suggested fix? Is there a fix under the BMW Mini technical campaign. On the 2nd of October 2020, we sent you an email confirming you could start test driving the Mini under specific circumstances at your request. And I quote from our email, if you are to road test, it should be carried out locally in the city centre in stop-start conditions, low speed driving, with plenty of clutch control as used by any driving school vehicle on a daily basis. And you have 
my permission for your service manager to do this. Now that email, in my view, clearly stated that you have our permission. And my question is this to you. Why did you ignore that email and not start test driving from that particular point on the 2nd of October? Why did you wait until the 5th of October, three days later, when you actually wrote to our solicitor stating that authorization to start the test drive and need to come from our solicitor. Is that accurate? Is that true? On the 6th of October 2020, after receiving an email from our solicitor, you replied and stated the following in relation to when the fault presents itself. To date, this pattern has not been confirmed. We've previously advised that there was no pattern and this information was very useful. Now, we don't necessarily agree with that. And the reason we don't agree with it is both your service manager and your, sale, your service advisors have been told numerous times when this fault occurs behind the pattern. Even your job sheets have stated this. And I quote from December 2019, fault occurs whilst in traffic in January 2020, only at slow speeds. June 2020 happens in slow moving traffic, revs will shoot up. And add that to the five separate dash cam clips that we've sent to you of when this fault occurs. Would you accept actually you did have a pattern as to when this fault develops? You have openly confirmed in writing that you supply all the information and data relating to our vehicle, but you haven't provided the job sheets or all of the data, the dates in February and August. So why did you hold this information back? And I definitely don't make the accusation, I just ask the question now. I just ask the question, do you think that some people could and might interpret it your non-disclosure of some important information as either being deceitful or devious. Maybe they think you would be trying to hide something. And I just simply ask the question, is this the case? On the 29th of September 2020, you acknowledged and stated the following. I'm so sorry that you're in a position where you can't earn and are also now facing costs due to cancelled driving tests and students taking up tuition elsewhere. Both Cotswold Mini and Mini UK are desperately keen to understand the fault on your Mini and its cause as quickly as possible. So we are in the best position to help you. So given your understanding of how this was impacted on our business, why is it that nearly 11 weeks have now passed since that email and yet you still claim that no diagnosis has been made and you still require more time? Do you think nearly 11 weeks and still claiming you require more time is acceptable from both yourself and Mini UK? On the 5th of October 2020, you stated the following. The question of rejection is a matter directly between Mini Financial Services and ourselves, of which we at Cotswold Hereford cannot influence. And I ask the question to you. Do you think that's a truthful an honest and not misleading statement. See, we spoke to many financial services who actually stated to us that if your service manager could confirm the fault was there, they would accept the rejection of the vehicle, given his position and qualifications as a master technician. And that information was relayed immediately to your service manager after that phone call to the Mini Financial Services. You see, on the 24th of September 2020, your service manager had previously stated to us by email, in response to an email that we'd sent to him about the rejection of the vehicle. And these were his words. Rest assured, I will do whatever I can to help. And my question now is, why and who stopped your service manager from being allowed to action this? Why did you, as the customer service manager, decide to take over the point of contact between Mini and ourselves. And I would add that we have very successfully and happily been dealing with your service manager for many years. 
on the 24th of September 2020. Mini Technical UK stated the following to you. As the customer has raised this as a safety complaint externally of the retailer, I would not recommend the vehicles returned at present. That could put you at risk if there were to be a related incident. And would you acknowledge now then that BMW Mini Technical UK refused us to allow us the use of our vehicle and they still continue to do so nearly 11 or so weeks on from that point. And then if we rewind the clock back, back to the 8th of June, some three and a bit months earlier, BMW Mini Technical UK stated the following to you. Please can you confirm that when the vehicle complaint happened, there was no damage or injury happened at that point. And if that was the case, are we now of the assumption that had we reported this fault to the vehicle safety board earlier, you would have not allowed us to carry on using the vehicle knowing that there was a dangerous fault, as your dealership would potentially be at risk of litigation had we been involved in a related incident? And the final question to that one is, why were we allowed to continue driving a vehicle when you knew the seriousness of that fault, that kept? presenting itself. In the last seven weeks, our vehicle has incurred 43 miles. We believe from our evidence that the vehicle was further road tested for three times from the 4th of November up until the 19th of November this year. Well, it's not been touched since, some three and a bit weeks later. And if our evidence is correct, why did it take four weeks from the point that you seized driving on the afternoon of the 7th of October until the 4th of November for those extra test drives to take place. You stated to us that you would carry out a one hour daily test drive from the 6th of October until the fault presents itself. And we know from the case review notes that the service manager encountered problems on his test drive on the 7th of October where the revs held at 2000 revs per minute without the accelerator being touched. He could smell the clutch becoming warm and the engine fan cutting in. And my question is this to you, is that the reason why test driving of the vehicle seized at that point and it didn't commence itself until four weeks later? And do you think that four weeks for mini technical is an acceptable time to analyse that data? We have evidence that our vehicle has not been touched for the last four weeks. What is the delay? Do you think that the average person on the street would see this as being acceptable? On the 25th of September 2020, we sent an email to your service manager. And in that email, we explained that my Mini is an identical Mini in its engine and specification. Also experienced the same random revving fault on the 2nd of September 2020 during the driving lesson. And it was also explained that we had dash cam footage of that event. You have stated numerous times that you are keen to understand the cause of the fault. And if Mini UK and yourselves are genuinely interested in trying to understand the cause of the fault, why didn't you ask to inspect my Mini? Just to see if it had any identical fault codes stored which could have helped you with that diagnosis? Or is it the fact in the case as other mini owners have reported to us. And they're also surprised to hear that when they've taken their vehicle to the mini dealerships after this fault occurs, that they're being told that there is no fault code stored. And therefore it made no sense for Mini UK to examine my vehicle. I just asked the question. We have been in direct contact with numerous individuals one thing that has become apparent when people have experienced this random revving fault and taken their vehicles to the BMW Mini dealerships is that they're all reporting the same dismissive response by the BMW Mini technicians or the dealerships. These people are all very agitated that BMW Mini are trying to dismiss the seriousness of this issue of when the car unexpectedly, randomly, self-excessively revs. And these individuals are genuinely frightened 
they're frightened to drive those cars again, as are we, in the case of our Mini DT18 LVM. And I just want to provide you with a few sentences from one particular statement that we have attained, dated the 7th of October 2020. Noticing a slight increase in revs as a result, I slowed the car to correct whilst doing so. The car then roared into action with a large revving sound like Formula One car. The next thing I realised, I had collided with a stone wall which collapsed on impact. I had minor cuts to the face due to the glass and slight burns to the face due to the deployment of the airbags. I had cuts and bruise into my left shin and had severe pain in my coccyx area. Now this was from a vicar who has 13 years of driving experience. And in my experience, vicars are not known for telling untruths. And the vehicle in question was a 2019 Mini Countryman, a 1.5 petrol, purchased from new. The same engine in the, in the Mini that we we're also experiencing a problem with. And then looking at the photographs, are you of the same opinion as ourselves that we are lucky that we're not looking at a coroner's inquest into the vicar's fatality. We honestly believe that we've never asked for anything that's unreasonable. From the very start, all we asked for was a replacement vehicle of the same age, mileage, specification and condition. A vehicle that was like for like, safe, reliable. A vehicle that was not gonna put our pupils, or the motorists, ourselves at risk. We also requested a dual controlled vehicle for our use whilst you investigated the fault. We requested the return of the £150 for the oil change that was never recorded on the vehicle's history that we felt was unnecessary. And you've declined everything. And this meant that we could not work without a car. We believe that you've caused us to suffer financially as a result of your shortfallings of bringing this matter to a reasonable and timely conclusion. To date, we estimate that figure to be in excess of £5,000. You've caused damage to our reputation. You've caused us unnecessary stress, sleepless nights, tears. It's had a huge impact on my wife's health. And 12 weeks have now elapsed. And yet again, you still request more time. So I repeat my question to you. Do you think that is acceptable? Do you think that we have been unreasonable or impatient and my final question to you is this, just to wrap things up nicely. Are you still of the opinion that this is not a manufacturing defect? Are you now prepared to state that this is something that we have done or are doing that's causing a vehicle to just dangerously, randomly and excessively self-rev? Do you think we are making this up? Do you think that all the other mini owners are making it up? or doing something that could cause this problem. To date, we haven't had a response back from Cotswold. We have asked if they would like to respond uh, with a statement or an answer to some of our questions. And obviously if that happens, we will provide that information at the very end of the video to uh, let you know what their thoughts are on this as well.